Welcome, everyone. We uh, we really appreciate uh, your attendance at this next edition of our quick demo series webinar. Um, my name is Mark Porter. I'm the product manager for the uh, HB Fuller, actually, uh, and I support the Gorilla Pro line of products. Uh, Paul, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Paul Alabone. I'm one of the business development managers for uh, uh, HB Fuller, and actually, I, I heavily support the uh, Gorilla Pro MRO product line as well. Uh, Morgan, you want to introduce, introduce yourself, please? Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, I'm Morgan Flynn. Um, I'll be like the host of this uh, webinar. Um, and I am a marketing analyst here at HB Fuller and I support the Gorilla Pro product line that we have here um, that we're gonna be showcasing today during today's webinar. Thank you very much. Yeah, so we are the uh, um, uh, one of the core, core teams of uh, the Gorilla Pro line. And as I said in the communication in the past, we realize your time is valuable. So we're gonna get right to the point today. Our, our, as, as I've also said, our quick demo series of webinars um, is, has, is and has been an ongoing um, line of webinars that's you know, dedicated to teaching more about the Gorilla Pro maintenance uh, and repair products that we have in the line and really kind of educating everyone on the use of each of those products. Uh, each session will be under 30 minutes, uh, and as our motto says, you know, we're our, our goal is to allow you to click in, learn, and click out uh, without spending a large portion of your day doing that. So, um, our first or our uh, our, our first set of uh, webinars uh, we've already done, and we have the recordings out there, and those are certainly available, and we'll uh, uh, highlight that towards the end as well. Um, a, a, a special reminder that we do have gifts going out to those that attend all of our webinars. And we also have a, uh, a very special and nice Gorilla Pro cooler uh, for a grand prize at the end of, once, once you register for each one, it's one vote in there or one uh, ticket in there. So uh, your, uh, your attendance is, uh, allows you to the opportunity to win a cooler. So. Uh, if you have questions at this, uh, at the end of this, we're going to take questions and answers. So in the process of this webinar, if you have a question, there is a chat function at the bottom. And if you could simply just type in your question, Morgan will uh, be feeding those questions back to Paul and I at the end. So I think that is the uh, all the house Kimi. So Paul, you ready to get going? Yeah, let's, let's, let's get it going. All right, here we go. Hello, I'm Mark Porter, Marketing Manager with HB Fuller Gorilla Pro, and... And I'm Paul Alabone, one of the Business Development Managers for HB Fuller Gorilla Pro. So today we're going to give you another of our series of quick demo series um, on our product line, on our Gorilla Pro adhesive sealants and lubricant line. And today we're going to focus on our epoxies and urethanes. And we got a, a special treat for you today. I think that you'll really like what we show you today. So as you really, as you look in the world today as to what's most commonly used from epoxies and urethanes, Paul, you, you see a lot of the 50 milliliter cartridges where you have the, the part A in one side and the part B in the other side. Or, and, or a can of A and a can of B where you've got yeah. to pour out and mix a large amount and then throw away a large yeah. amount. And in many cases, they have uh, either a lot of waste or they have the nozzles that get the products, you know, all stuck up in it mm -hmm. and then sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't you have to find the gun to go get it to, to, to mm -hmm. make the whole cartridge work again um, just a lot of hassles a lot of downtime and a lot of waste in the cartridges so we've got the solution 
Uh, we have what we think you'll really enjoy as far as ap uh, epoxies and urethanes. And these are called our double bubble applicators. So what these are is basically are a series of three different products that we have that are set for different applications and different uses. The first one is our EP3 fast setting three minute epoxy. It's actually a three to five minute epoxy, sets up very quick. And you could call this like our general purpose epoxy. And then we have a sister product to that called our, our non-seg fast setting epoxy. This particular one now is a little bit thicker than the standard epoxy. So you can not only use it for um, applications that, uh, you know, over, maybe overhead applications, but most commonly used for filling, drilling, potting, different things like that. So we'll go over that in a minute. And then we also have our fast setting urethane epoxy. Now this one is most commonly used in applications where you have like um, movable products like leathers, rubber, plastic, anything that's going to have a lot of movability to it, or most importantly, dissimilar materials yeah. where so you have one expansion rate that's different than the other. Yeah, so. you might have some flexibility between a rigid substrate and, and, a, uh, and a softer material. The urethanes give you that added flexibility. They also bond, uh, hard to bond to thermoplastics. Uh, like TPO, like urethane, that yeah. most epoxies will not bind. So it's, it's a nice um, addition to the, uh, the, the portfolio. So you want to mention what they come in too, Paul, uh, as far as how they, uh, the sizes of the containers? Sure, sure. Yeah, actually the, uh, the double bubble packs are 3.5 gram for the EP3, 4.5 gram for the EP5 gel epoxy, mm -hmm. And then 3.5 gram for the PU3 urethane adhesive. Now they will come in packets of either 10, you know, 10 uh, double bubble kits and 10 straws or 100. So depending upon the size of shop you uh, operate in or the area uh, the, or the, the amount of areas that you need product in, you can choose between a smaller box and a much larger box. But again, it's the convenience of that patented double bubble, one-to-one uh, -one ratio packet. And speaking of, we're gonna we're gonna kind of show you how really uh, efficient and nice this is, and, and uh, how this would be benefit to you and your shop. So as you see this, uh, as as Paul and I mentioned, these come in a what's called a double bubble pouch system. So there is a part A and a part B in here, separated by a seam. And so instead of actually having that, that uh, 50 milliliter cartridge or 250 milliliter cartridge with the gun and the nozzle and everything, this is ready to go. And it's a single use application and, and it's, as Paul said, 3.5 to 4.5 grams, which is typically enough. If not, you can use another one, um, but there's no waste. So this is how nice and efficient these are. So if you go to use, like for instance, the extra fast setting of three minute epoxy, Here's how nice they are. Literally, you just take these and you fold them over. And I guess I should back up, Paul. The nice, really nice thing about these is, is you can have these in your tool pouch. You can have them in your toolbox. You can have them in your pocket, ready to go. Uh, and anywhere you are in the plant or anywhere or, you are in the shop. They're really yeah. convenient for vending machines too. Yeah. So anyway, super convenient. So you bend these over when you go to want to have to use something. So you identify something that you want to, uh, to want to bond together. And we always recommend just kind of uh, pushing, pushing it around and then actually just pushing towards the top to kind of push the product down a little bit. You simply cut it off with a knife or a pair of scissors and then you just flip it up and you pull it out. Now the part A and the part B are a one-to-one -one ratio mix and they are going to come out and be uh, perfectly ready to go. And as Paul said, we do give you the stir stick on there and with, within the box. So you'd want to have one of those or something handy like that. And then you literally take this product or take this and mix this with this stir stick to make sure that the part A and the part B uh, mix together in an, a, a true epoxy format. Um, and then literally within seconds, you have enough product, as you can see, to really uh, do a single application. So I'm going to do um, a couple different applications with this right now. I'll do, you know, uh, a piece of metal. And, and 
I guess the important note is like the EP3, the standard epoxy is, you can use that on almost anything, steel, uh, wood, glass, uh, glass. Ceramic, glass. elastomers. It, 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 that's our general purpose product. Yeah, so you, you literally just pull that up, put that on, and keep in mind that it is, um, it, it is a product that uh, works really fast. So you have to have that positioned within probably three minutes before uh, it's gonna start to set up. Or you can put it on wood, as you can see here. Uh, works just fantastic on almost any surface that you have that on. We always recommend clamping. Mm -hmm. It just keeps that bond area tight and secure. Um, what, with whatever application you do, it just gives you an added benefit of those coming together. So. And because of the time constraints in these products setting up here, this is a, uh, a slat or coupon, wooden yeah. coupons put together with the, uh, the EP3 epoxy. Yeah, yeah it, incredible strength. Uh, like I said, this some of the strongest epoxies that you'll ever see in the world. Uh, in fact, most of the time, Paul, the, the actual substrate will break yeah. before the bond line will break. Yeah, you'll get substrate um, failure. The parts are bonding fatigue a lot easier than the, than the adhesive. So, yeah, so the second one in our series, as I mentioned, was our, uh, our, our EP5, and this is our non-SAG formula. Now, once again, this is a very similar formula to the EP3 that we just discussed as far as a general purpose uh, epoxy. Can be used on a wide variety of substrates. Um, most commonly used, though, as you'll see here, as I put this one together, most commonly used because of its thicker version as a non-sag or filling type or potting type epoxy. So you'll notice as I put this out that on this particular one, one is clear that, and the other uh, other part is 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 a purplish format. Now when you, once again, you go to mix this up, and once you mix this up, as you notice here, it actually unitizes into a clear color. Now on this particular one, when it's clear, you know you've mixed it sufficient. So I always mix that up very, very good. Make sure that uh, it's ready to go. And on this one here, I'm gonna show you uh, an application of maybe just filling, because this is commonly used, um, as you see here in this particular application, uh, this was a, a more of a potting type or fill fillet type com, uh, application here that we use that for. But in this particular case, because of the nature of the build of this, that you can actually put this in there and fill a hole very nicely with that. And, and this and will fill, I guess, Paul, any, any kind of rubber, the steel, anything that oh, has so a again, hole in again, it. Again. Yeah, again, it, I mean, you can, you can patch rubber, you can patch uh, metal parts, uh, concrete floor type applications, but any parts of, of, of a machine or a housing that break and you've got a large gap because it'll fill that space and all that. Yeah, so the, um, the third product in our line is our fast setting urethane. Now the fast setting urethane uh, is a great addition to our line as well because a lot of times you have urethane parts, you have plastic parts, rubber parts, leather, or most importantly, uh, you have dissimilar parts. Let's say you're bonding a piece of rubber to a piece of glass or uh, a, a stonework to, a, I don't know, something, a piece of rubber or something. Anyway, you're gonna get different levels of thermal expansion and contraction. And those are gonna move against each other. So you want something that's gonna have not only the strength to hold those two substrates together, but you want something that's gonna have that give and take. Yeah, high a little degree bit of flexibility. Of high degree of flexibility. So with this one here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna show you, um, you wanna push that product around a little bit. And once again, part A in one side, part B in the other. You take that, you push that down just slightly uh, and just cut that open with a knife or scissors. Put that down into the, uh, uh, it doesn't matter what surface you use. Don't use your kitchen table. You probably won't be popular if you do that. And on this particular one, on the urethane, you'll notice that it is more of a beigey color. So when you mix that part A and that part B together, you get more of a, of a light beige type color, okay? And uh, if you notice on this one here, I'm gonna actually use and show you this, this bonding material on a piece of rubber. Uh, it could be anything though. Actually, you know what, Paul, I'm gonna do? I'm gonna bond this rubber to this wood just to kind of show the flexibility and the versatility of it. But, uh, so you can uh, just put that on a piece of rubber or you can put a piece of metal, I guess, even too, if you wanted. Um, 
Let's clamp those, get, clamp those guys together. And uh, once again, this would be a fantastic application for this because with the rubber and the wood, you get different rates of thermal expansion and contraction. So it's gonna be a wonderful product to bond them and have a tremendous strength, but yet still have that flexibility within that epoxy that you're going to, going to need. And the, so, uh, the, the PU3, even though it's a five minute quick curing urethane, it takes about 20 minutes to develop handling strength because it's so flexible. Uh, to give you an indicator of what the products look like in a cured state, yeah. you see the, um, uh, the uh, EP5 gel, okay, it's not exactly clear, it's kind of opaque, but it holds a profile, fills a big gap. The mm -hmm. self-leveling EP3, fast curing epoxy, lays flat. And then you've got the, um, the PU5 urethane, and that's the appearance it will have once it's full, fully cured on your substrates. Yeah, so between the three of these uh, epox the two epoxies and the urethane, we think we have given uh, a selection of products that will fit almost any application that you would have within your shop or your uh, industrial environment. Yeah, so hopefully the uh, Gorilla Pro structural adhesive line under the Gorilla label from HB Fuller um, well marked in a unique package, save some time, save some effort for you, and is viewed as a very, very convenient, uh, easy to use uh, solution to a, a lot of your applications. And eliminates waste. And eliminates waste. Very, literally no waste because you're using one packet at a time. If you need more than that, you can use two. So thanks so much for joining us. I uh, hope you learned something. Uh, stay tuned for the next uh, series of uh, quick series demo edition of our Gorilla Pro line. Thanks again. All right, so now that you've seen these products in action and you've found a few that you want to purchase, all you have to do is go over to our website, and that website is GorillaPro.com to order these products. You'll see a button at the top right corner that says Products. If you click on that Products, it'll instantly pull down to several categories of our products, and you just choose the one that you want. And after that, you pull down and there is a, you find the product that you want and there is a menu down there of distributors that you can order that from. Once you find the distributor that you want to order that from, all you have to do is hit the buy button and that buy button will take you right to the distributor location where you can very easily order that product. And also, if you're wanting more information about our products, uh, such as technical or technical information or anything further beyond what we've described today, uh, that's easy as well. All you have to do is go up to our upper right corner and hit resource button. That resource button will actually pull you down to three boxes and if you look at the left box it says downloads. Now downloads will take you uh, to all of our uh, literature that we have including technical data sheets, safety data sheets, cell sheets and stuff. Uh, and then you just choose the category you want. If you want a technical data sheet, you pull down, and then you find the category you want to have a technical data sheet on. Pull it up, and there it is. And that will be saved. You can save that to electronic file format. You can email it. You can save it. You can print it. You can do whatever you want with that. So it's that easy. Thank you very much. All right, so thank you so much for joining us today in viewing our new um, Gorilla Pro epoxies and urethanes. Uh, please stay tuned for other editions of our new Gorilla Pro quick demo series products where we'll be demoing other products in the future. And uh, those will be coming up very, very soon. So please uh, keep an eye on our website and, and our communication and you'll see some more coming through. And now, once again, we're going to turn things over to a question and answer uh, series so we can help you with any applications or questions you guys have. Fantastic. Once again, thank you so much for, uh, for sticking with us. And uh, hopefully, hopefully everybody learned a little bit more about our epoxy, our double bubble epoxy line. We're very proud of the, of the double bubble line because, um, you know, uh, double bubble is a patented uh, and uh, uh, trademarked product for us, a registered trademark of ours, and we're very proud of the double bubble line of epoxies. Um, it's very unique uh, in the marketplace and uh, provides such an efficient use of, of these types of products in the shop. And as I said very quickly, I want to reiterate, if 
you know, they're, they're, they are single use packets. If you need more product, you can actually just simply grab another product or another packet. And then you have, instead of 2.5, you have five grams of product, or I'm sorry, 3.5, you have seven grams of product. So um, it's, it's, uh, it's such an efficient and easy use system. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Morgan to really kind of um, let us know what the questions and answer or questions are, and we'll provide the answers. Um, so Morgan, it's all yours. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Uh, we had a lot of great questions come in uh, right at the end and then also some still coming in uh, right this minute. Um, one of the first questions we got was the original double bubble packet was mixed in the pack. Can this still be done? Yeah, not necessarily on these. Um, these the way these work is they have a seam in the middle, okay? And that seam in the middle completely seals out part A with part B. Um, and because of that, uh, it really prolongs the shelf life of this product and keeps part A away from part B in all aspects of it, including you know, any air possibility leaks that would get over from one to another that would contaminate the product. So in this particular double bubble package, um, you do have to fold it over and then squeeze it out um, together. So you, to answer your question, Morgan, uh, no, it, it really cannot be uh, mixed in the packet. You literally have to squeeze it out onto a surface. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that the person might be referring to like a clip pack where you were pinched off with a clip and you'll take the clip off. These are all very fast products. It's really not practical to mix it in the, the, the pouch before you apply it because, you know, in, in the case of the, the EP3, uh, you got you know like only a couple of minutes to get it on your parts before it starts to react and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good point. Yeah. Um, our next question that we had is: Is there a temperature gradient in which these products should be used? Well, you you, you can use them. Um, well, they they operate from from negative sixty five to uh, two hundred and fifty degrees. You know, once they're cured and things like that. Um, if you're using them outdoors, uh, the cold temperature slows down the reaction. Okay, uh, you so I'd be very careful. You know, right right now, you know it's it's you know five degrees in Chicago. It's probably colder up in Green Bay and all that. But uh, I would I would use these as close to room temperature as possible. So then you get the same cure rate as we've described with the part numbers and 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 uh, illustrating the products on the tech data sheets. Yeah, so if I can add one thing on that too. So uh, that's the key term, room temperature. So what is room temperature? You know, uh, on, on average uh, in the industry, it's it's somewhere around that, uh, you know, 65 to 75 range um, temperature. Now, what happens if it's if you're not in that temperature range? Well, um, it depends on whether you're going colder than that or hotter than that. Um, but it, in, in retrospect, it will it, it will hamper the setup time typically of how long that product sets up. And uh, so, you know, the, the hotter it is, probably the quicker it's gonna set up. Exactly, so in, in, in summer temperatures and things like that, they're gonna go even quicker than illustrated. Yeah, so it's uh, so thermal curing, it's it's going to uh, very much hasten the, the, the cure time on that. And colder, it would, it would uh, and, and that can be a problem. If you get colder uh, and you're looking for something to set up, and you really need to, to, to be handling this pro this product in, in a very short amount of time. Uh, colder temperatures can hamper the setup time, allowing it not to set up as quickly as you want and uh, not allow you to handle that product as quick as possible. So somewhere in that, uh, in that room temperature range. Perfect, thank you. Um, and then our next question that we had come in was, can this be used for HVAC and R coils? Um. What are they made of? Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, they didn't specify in their question. I mean, if they're talking about uh, uh, tacking or, or sealing or, or potting um, in those types of applications, we, we the, the EP5 does a fantastic job of that. Um, it, it's used in a lot of electrical, a uh, lot of internal component uh, machinery. Um, in bonding and sealing, um, wire tacking and things like that. So 
that particular product is really the one that we go to for those types of products. I, I'm, I'm guessing that that might be where they're headed with that question. Oh. Yeah, it'll, cert it'll certainly bond metal, but if, if it's if it's that corrugated, more flexible tubing, or uh, I guess the HVAC uh, coils and things like that for exhaust or something like that, the urethane because it's a little bit more flexible, that might be an option too. Awesome. Yeah, if, if you are using the the rubber tubing or that type of stuff, it, it, uh, I would say you're right, Paul. I think the PU5, uh, the urethane, is probably the better way to go on that. Or dissimilar materials, as we said in the in the webinar, if you're bonding rubber to a piece of metal or something, um, that that PU5 urethane is really the way to go. Perfect. Um, and then the next question we had come in was, what chemical product would you recommend for cleaning up these epoxies in the event it were to drip on a finished surface? Yeah, so um, it, any cleaning solvent, um, it, it depends on how <laughs> it depends on how fast you get it, right? Um, if, if you're uh, if, if you're literally talking about uh, instantly um, cleaning, you know, any cleaning solvent such as a mineral spirits or a, a MEK, methyl ethyl ketone, um, acetone might be a little harsh, but uh, those types of products are very good cleaning solvents. Yeah. Uh, I, and, yeah. I, isopropyl alcohol would be pretty good too. But yeah, isopropyl you know, alcohol. Wanna, like, like Marky had said, you want to you clean up right away because once it starts to, to harden and bond the substrates, it gets harder and harder to remove. Right. So. And um, if I could add one thing, quick thing to Morgan, um, if you go to our resource page on our website and you go down to technical data sheets, TDSs, and pull those up, each one of those three products has it on there. And in every one of those cases, we do give cleanup recommendations, storage recommendations, all the technical information you need on any one of those. It's very detailed. So the answers to those questions should be on those technical data sheets specifically. So. Perfect. Um, and then this last question, um, one of the last questions we have here, um, I can answer this one. Um, I was wondering about, you know, how we can, um, someone who's attending this webinar, if you're wondering, like, if you can share this webinar with your coworkers, friends, um, anyone that's interested in the Gorilla Pro quick demo series and learning more about these products, um, I will be publishing these on our YouTube channel. Um, and so find our YouTube channel on YouTube. It's Gorilla Pro on YouTube. Um, and all you have to do is just subscribe to our YouTube channel and you should be notified um, when I post that. Um, and to the individual that did send in that question, I can certainly email you directly and let you know when that gets published. Yeah, and if you have further questions, um, you know, it, it, the, the email address is at the bottom, gorillapro at hbfuller.com. Um, please uh, uh, feel free to, to send us questions uh, or send us requests if you want to, if you want to visit to your, to your facility. Wonderful. Uh, we'll set that up. Um, we can bring you samples. We can show you anything you need to do or, you know, correspond any way possible. But, uh, you know, so use that gorillapro at hbfuller.com email address to communicate with us and we'll uh, we'll certainly get right back to you. Yeah. And really quick, we had uh, two questions come in here, right? Um, not too long ago. One of them was, what would you recommend for bond bonding galvanized steel for an outdoor application? You know, I, I guess I can answer that one. You, you, you might be best with the urethane uh, in, in this product group, you know, because it, it is a very in, environmental, uh, outdoor type of product and things like that. You've got that flexibility and again, it does bond, you know, metals, you know, and thermal plastics and things like that. A uh, part of the Gorilla Pro package that, you know, is, is, you know, it is not offered is, a, is our methacrylate series. And those are really robust metal bonders. You know, so that would probably be the most appropriate for that particular application and things like that. But the closest one in the, in the double bubble uh, Gorilla Pro portfolio would be the uh, PU5. Perfect. All right, uh, Morgan, we're probably uh, up against the time here. So yeah, I, now that it's 1030. I promised everybody we'd get out under 30 minutes. So I'd like to 
keep that promise. So. Yeah. And if we didn't get to your question, no worries. Um, we can certainly get back to you through email um, to make sure that your questions get answered. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, we will, if you've asked a question, we will certainly get back to you, um, we'll, you know, without hesitation. So thank you. Thank you everyone for joining. Be looking on, uh, on for the invite for the next one, which is coming up within two weeks. And uh, thanks again. Have a great day. Yeah, thanks everybody.